I think we've all come back to the main room. I'm sorry if we uh, there were some conversations that were cut off um, there briefly. Um, just just to be clear, none of the conversations that you are having, um, either in the chat or in the notes, um, we're going to keep record of them all and we'll be able to share them all on the Susanna forum. Um, what I'm going to ask each of the note takers to do um, is if you can enable your microphones um, and I'll call upon you um, one at a time to um, give a very brief highlight, literally a minute, um, feedback of the, the main points or any particular point if you want to pick out just one point from your room. Um, I'm going to come first to the room um, that Ada was moderating. Just a minute, Ada. It's, uh, yeah. it's going to be a tight one. That's all right. We did have, oh, I was in the lobby, a very interesting, very, very interesting two main points that came out of our discussion. First was about um, what to measure and how we measure. So, yeah, we let this show with all, um, the experience from um, from BRAC, where they're looking at um, actually measuring latrine use and then the use of technology with the passive uh, latrine use monitors, as well as using observational data and self-reported um, use. Um, I mean, the conclusion from that exercise was basically that the the passive latrine use monitor the technology was not as effective and was actually more expensive than using the observational data and the self-reported use data. So uh, kind of like where a situation where technology hadn't really been as useful as was imagined. So that's one key point that we got out of that. That's a full minute. <laughs> so that'll be your point. Um, we won't lose the information. We will be be sharing it. Um, Pierre Andrea, could I ask you to switch to room two? And in the interest of um, time, Darren, perhaps I could ask you just to give a quick um, overview of what we discussed in our room. Yeah, I mean, I I will do this very quickly. Uh, we had quite a shy group. Um, uh, but we did have two or three comments. Um, one of those was building, or, which I thought was interesting, is could we be thinking through or looking at the, the factors that might make communities more resilient um, if, uh, you know, if community-wide behavior change begins to lapse? I guess this is something that's dealing specifically with the uh, sustainability of ODF uh, piece. Um, you know, could we be uh, thinking about affordable financing mechanisms? Could we be thinking about technical support uh, in some shape or form? Could we be thinking about, you know, key key champions within the community who might be able to keep mentoring and maintaining interest um, I amongst the community to to avoid uh, lapsing? Um, and then there was a, you know, second point was the, the discussion around standard measurements for CLTS um, su success, so to speak, um, whether that was achievable within country, between countries, the type of um, skill sets that we would need to have available to, to build such a standard measurement. There was a, a short discussion around how perhaps the targets within the SDGs were pushing us towards a, a sort of more comprehensive understanding of what was going on or happening in, in communities. We talked about the wealth quintile uh, analysis behind that. And I think there was a good point that was made by Jeremy Collin around the difference between a standard definition and an operationally viable um, set of, uh, of measuring measurements, if you like, uh, behind CLTS and that we shouldn't lose sight of that when we're, when we're thinking about on the ground implementation. That was it. Great. Thank you. That's uh, that's a minute. I'm going to have to jump in there. Apologies. Um, OK. Thank you, Darren. Um, let's move to Johnny's room. And I think we've got a problem um, getting our note takers on board. So could I ask um, Johnny um, and Hans if you could prepare the, the next one? Johnny, could you give us a, a quick one minute overview of your room? If you can sure. Uh, I can move through it pretty quickly. We also had a, a relatively Civil discussion, um, not too many controversial thoughts, but we uh, heard experiences from Mali, Madagascar, um, Ethiopia, and Ghana from people who have worked with projects. And we talked uh, at first a little bit about um, ODF, communities that are ODF reverting to OD and how that seems to be a common experience 
Uh, in in the Molly study, um, it seems like men who were most prone to reverting to open defecation. Uh, we talked a little bit about the accuracy of ODF defecation. Uh, in our studies in Ghana and Ethiopia, we found many communities where, you know, right after being certified as ODF, uh, when a surveyor from the research comes, uh, research team comes in, a household is happy to report that they do in fact still practice open defecation. So there may be some issues with um, incentives or, or kind of honesty in reporting depending on um, who's measuring ODF, whether it's a government um, administrator or a facilitator or if it's someone independent. Uh, we then talked a little bit about, I think from the Madagascar example, about households who have become ODF inside the village, but when they go out into the fields or other workplaces, uh, they don't always have the same facilities. So um, beyond household access and behavior doesn't always align. And it would be interesting to think about beyond household sanitation practices uh, as part of ODF. And then we had a couple of comments about the, san the sustainable development goals and how that will change the way we measure indicators. And it looks like at the moment that beyond households, sanitation access and practices may not be captured in the sustainable development goals. So we'll have to continue to use our own um, thoughts and guidance in terms of what we measure and what we strive for when the goals don't match it, them in every way. Thanks, Johnny. That's uh, fantastic. Hans, could we come to your room and could you give us a very quick one minute breakdown of your points, just some highlights? Uh, the first question was about uh, how to measure behavior change at scale, and I answered that it is possible. We did it many times at scale with 1,000, 1,500 households, and you only have to, to, to uh, let me say, substitute your normal cap uh, by a by a more more wiser kind of cap uh, with with uh, uh, containing behavioral determinants and. Um, only measuring behavior takes uh, a quarter of an hour per household. And um, what is the next? Uh, okay, there were many. Point would be great. Thank you. <laughs> One more. <laughs> um, yes, is there a predetermined behavior determinant? I said no. Uh, um, do a cap or uh, improve cap, and uh, then you can do your behavioral interventions tailored to, to your target population. That's it. Thank you so much.